Hello everybody, I'm a Slick and Form Slick here again with my fourth tutorial, basic tutorial on Elite Dangerous. And today we're going to talk about outfitting and upgrading your ship. And hang in there because it probably is going to be a long, long tutorial on this one because there is a lot to talk about. And um, I want to say that I switched back to my Sidewinder because that's the... Um, ship everybody starts with and I want to show you um, the upgrading of a Sidewinder and I'm also gonna sh give you some tips on what to upgrade okay so let's start go to starport services if you are in a big dock keep in mind that smaller shipping uh, starports and star docks don't have an outfitting service on that port so keep that in mind go to the biggest dock that you can find within the star system and click outfitting okay lovely side there comes my weapons if you are here you can see two uh, different kind of um, parts on your screen the outfitting itself and your ship's statistics and the ship statistics is very um, you need to keep an eye on that because it's very important that you don't exceed a couple of things for instance the power use the availability depends on your power plant so the more power you have available the more weapons you can or the more bigger weapons you can upgrade on your ship or internal components or utilities the deployed says how many web how many power you're consuming when your weapons are deployed and the rejected says or shows how many power you use when your weapons are retracted keep in mind that neither of these um, rejected or deployed um, numbers can exceed your total availability retracted if you go outside retracted you can can't go anywhere you have to shut down ship systems to even fly and um, if this the deployed number is bigger than the available number uh, the moment that you uh, load up your weapons you will go uh, and shut down because you cannot um, uh, provide them with enough power that's it okay how many cargo you can have maximum and you have currently fuel maximum and have currently mass it depends on uh, what you have installed um, the, the maximum mass uh, for now is uh, 15.9 of the 72 tons available and the mass that I currently have is 46.9 so enough limit of uh, enough uh, range I have left yeah the jump range says unladen laden and current this is unloaded loaded and how much I can jump now unloaded is no cargo and loaded is your cargo bay full pretty obvious and as you can see I'm not proud of it I'm bankrupt almost I took on a couple of missions to try and get some pirates and they were flying around in anacondas and anacondas are very big ships that shoot deadly ray beams and particles at me and I died pretty quickly and I had to rebuy my ship but anyway okay so let's go to the part we want to talk about and it's gonna take a lo long time so I'll warn you again you have basically your um, hard points your internal systems and your library library is your paint job or your decals um, you can buy them at uh, frontier shop and the hard points are divided into hard points for weapons and utility hard points utility mounts um, we go over them later on but basically you have three types of hard points for weapons small medium and large and of course the bigger the hard point the bigger weapon you can carry pretty obvious and utility um, are for external utilities you can use to um, have missiles uh, avoided or those kind of things so on the external things on your ship so let's go into weapons buy sell and swap pretty obvious and here you have the different weapons notice that with the amount of credits I have I can buy any of them but I can show you what they are okay so um, they are basically three type of weapons you have your projectile weapons 
missiles and uh, mines and, and uh, those kind of things. Then you have your energy weapons and you have your particle weapons. And the um, lasers are a good thing to start. Um, they don't. They do draw more energy than uh, particle weapons or kinetic weapons, but they also are maintenance free and don't take up ammo. And ammo consumption, you must not underestimate the ammo consumption of cannons, especially multi cannons, my personal favorite. And they are expensive to reload again. So take in mind when you start, you don't have much money, but you made some money, you want to upgrade, upgrade to a burst laser like this one. And why do I say this one? That's because this one is a gimbaled version of the burst laser. Gimbaled means that um, they have a little room to move around the lock on the target. So um, you have your fixed weapon, that is this icon, and you also have a turret version. I will see if it's in the list. But your turret version is one that can almost um, uh, track your enemy in a 360 degrees. The gimbaled is it can track most of the enemies in in front of you in your view and the fixed ones are you have your corsair if you shoot it it will shoot to where your corsair is pointing at the moment so keep that in mind um, i like the gimbal especially because i'm not a real sharp shooter to be honest and with this <clears throat> Sorry, with the gimbal version, yeah, you can uh, have um, uh, them a little bit out of your sky side or out of your crosshair and still hit them. Gimbaled versions of weapons do consume more power draw that you can see over there, and also that will affect your maximum uh, power draw when weapons are deployed. Let's go over um, the ratings in the classes quick. The higher the rating, it starts with G, the highest rating is A, means um, the overall performance of that weapon you are trying to buy. Uh, the higher rating, the better it gets. Doesn't mean that a class A is always better than a class B. You have to uh, figure it out for yourself, which weapon does work for you and is uh, the best suited for your flying style, your playing style. Okay, integrity and health. It's not damaged because it's brand new. Gimbaled, we went over that. Remember, you have your turreted, you have your gimbaled, and you have your fixed. And the type of damage, it's a laser, so it does thermic damage. Excellent in ga against shields and less effective against uh, hull. And uh, kinetic weapons, the cannons are excellent against hull and less effective against shields. So a combination of those two would be preferred in the future. The amount of damage it does, the amount of penetration to the armor, the rate of fire and the damage per second are linked together uh, with the damage. If you have a weapon that has a high damage output but a slow rate of fire, your damage per second can be lower than a weapon that doesn't do a high damage output output but has a high rate of fire so keep that in mind i always check the damage per second as one of the most important things when i buy a weapon next to the power draw um, the thermal load the thermal load says how many heat heats it generates when you fire a weapon and you will see that the bigger beam uh, lasers and the bigger cannons will create more thermal load on your uh, on your ship and that means that your heat will go up Okay, you have the multi cannon. Just look at it. As you can see, the power draw uh, goes uh, down a lot. Um, that means because you're not using the ship's energy to shoot at someone, you're using projectiles to shoot at something. Um, uh, keep in mind that um, these are very important stats the uh, maximum amount of money you can carry in your ship and the maximum ammo on the clip size so every multi cannon or cannon has a clip size it's just um, like when you have uh, an AK-47 you have an ammo clip when it's empty you take it out you put a new one in and that is your clip size and your ammo maximum that is how much ammo you carry in total per cannon um, keep in mind that you can run out of ammo with projectile weapons okay 
then we have the third one that is uh, the mine launchers and missile racks you see that these do a lot of damage but don't have much weapons to take with you and they take up and then in, in a, a hard point so if you go on a mission that you want to attack multiple um, enemies um, you will uh, you are better off with uh, projectile weapons or beam laser weapons but if you are chasing only one pirate pick up a mice wreck and see if it works for you it doesn't work uh, for me let me scroll down yeah if you see on the beam laser it's turreted and you can see it by this icon that it is turreted this is gimbaled and this is fixed okay so that is it for the weapons the utilities we have a couple of diff different utilities i will go through them pretty quick the heat sink launcher if you have weapons that generate a lot of uh, heat um, you internally will cook um, so what you can do is install a heat sink launcher and what it does it um, will put some of that heat into a capsule and shoot it th in, into space so you will cool down quickly the chaff launcher if a missile has a lock on you you can deploy a chaff and the missile will go to the chaff instead of your ship pretty easy the electronic countermeasure is a very handy thing if you are a cargo hauler and you are attacked by pirates or other criminals um, what it does for a short period of time it it jams the signal to the other ships so they cannot get a missile lock on you and they also uh, are effective against turreted weapons and gimbaled weapons the kill warrant scanner if you want to be a bounty hunter and you go to a system that isn't controlled by a group or the federation everyone if you scan them is clean because there is no law and uh, so everyone comes out clean and not wanted uh, the kill warrant scanner scans uh, the opponent uh, according to the database in different star systems so if one of the star systems has that guy as uh, wanted you will see it pop up in your screen you can um, shoot him out of space and then you can collect your bounty in that system he was um, searched in cargo scanner um, pretty obvious it scans the cargo of the targeted vessel point defense this one will shoot down um, projectiles like missiles or um, uh, mines or torpedoes that are coming at your ship. Um, remember that it, they take up ammo and the ammo is pretty expensive. So uh, be careful if you are using that. Um, and last but not least we have the frame shift wake scanner. And what this does if you are a bounty hunter and you are attacking a vessel and he escapes into super cruise then you can use the frame shift wake scanner to see where he went and you can change him down okay then internal pretty quickly a couple are uh, like the bottoms ones you can choose what kind of configuration uh, is in there and the above here are also fixed light alloy is basically the uh, hull of your ship your armor the better the armor the better you are protected against bullet or beam lasers the power plants now this is a very Im important one if i choose the most expensive here you will see that the available amount of power is going up also the jump rate is going up because this one is lighter than the one i have currently uh, stocked um, but in, and the more available power means the more bigger weapons you can uh, use uh, the power plant the thrusters well the thrusters are basically the things that move your ship around and uh, tilt jaw walled and the better the thrusters um, the more or the, the quicker you will turn pretty easy the frame sh shift drive if you want if you buy a frame shift drive a new one a bigger one your jump range will increase as you can see here and uh, this one the most expensive one um, expands my jump wage with 2.4 uh, times um, the light years I can jump now so if you want to go to farther star systems this is the thing you want life support if you want to smuggle uh, illegal cargo into stations 
um, you can use silent uh, silent running and silent running will make you almost indetectable for federation ships and they cannot scan you cannot scan your cargo and will not attack you or give you fines pretty easy for um, if you're gonna smuggle things around um, the amount of time that you can um, go on live support is standard 10 minutes and with this one the oxygen time is 15 minutes and this one has a better tank is 25 minutes there are even um, um, bigger bigger life supports uh, available in other stations then the power distributor if you want to go like me on um, bounty hunting um, remember in I think part 2 uh, when we flew around a bit um, or part three, I can't remember. Uh, you can choose your blips, as we call them, between um, weapons, engines, and systems. System for your shields, engine for the speed, and weapons for more power to your engine. That is coming to this power distributor. And as you can see, the weapon capacity, for instance, is 12,000 energy points, and it recharges um, uh, your capacitator with 1500 points a second so the bigger these numbers are the more power you have for your shields for your engines or for your um, weapons and the less you need to recharge in between them so if you want to go on bounty hunting um, this is one of the first things I would advise to buy uh, as your uh, one of your first upgrades okay sensors they don't have sensors um, that you can upgrade uh, here on this station you can see at the others they have uh, a blue plus here in the left corner or in the right co corner um, but sensors is how fast uh, your skip your ship uh, uh, sensors other um, can scan other ships what they are and if they're wanted or not the fuel tank of course how many uh, fuel you can carry with you and this is one of the first points you can swap with other things uh, for instance the shield generator if you are going on fighting missions of course you need a shield generator and the bigger the shield generator the better it is a fuel scoop is if you are out of fuel go, go, go flying close to a sun you pick up um, the fuel scoop and you can convert uh, sun's energy into fuel for your uh, ship hatchbreaker limpet opens up an enemy's cargo hatch and jettison all their cargo into space the basic discovery scanner for exploring come back to the lager you can add you can swap the shield generator for extra cargo um, or even more extra cargo and what do we have more the frame shift drive interdictor that's um, uh, for bounty hunters especially useful if you are in super cruise you scan other ships and if they are wanted you go fly behind them you hit the switch for the frame shift drive in the interdictor and then um, you basically can get them out of super cruise the starts a little mini game and you have to uh, keep uh, uh, the enemy within a circle they trying to get in way and if you do that long enough they will drop out of super cruise and you can attack them or rob them or whatever you want what you also have is the refinery if you want to make money to mining you get a mining laser you get a refinery you go to a big rock of, uh, of in space and then you can mine and refine your own stuff the AFM the auto field maintenance unit repairs things on your ship remember not everything so go to Google and there are lists on what it does and what it doesn't uh, fix I don't find it much use because the most um, uh, important systems on your ship will not get repaired by the AFM and out of uh, sorry the day de detailed service scanner we come back later on exploration and that's about it for this hard point and these two are also different hard points you can put different things on so you can customize your ship however you want depending on what you want to do with it and well that's it I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial um, and I hope you will watch the other tutorials that are upcoming in the future if you have a question or you want to leave uh, a comment please do so on YouTube and for now I'm say goodbye thank you for watching and see you in space